What's going on everybody, it's Carmine from Bar Mind Tech and today we're going to be working on adding a self-hosted dashboard homepage uh, kind of thing, a uh, whole bunch of words, but it's going to be this cool little homepage we can make that we're going to host ourselves and give it as a central location to give us shortcuts to click on all of our different Docker containers and other self-hosted services we may be running. So instead of trying to remember IPs and ports or have bookmarks on your internet browser, we have this nice looking homepage that we can just click on and get right to what we want to work with. So let's get started with it. So after I started self-hosting for a little bit and I started getting more and more different Docker containers and other services, I realized that trying to remember the IPs and the ports or having all these different browser shortcuts really wasn't what I wanted to do. So I wanted to move over to using a self-hosted dashboard. So that's when I moved over to Dashy, and Dashy was a good one, but I didn't really like the way that the interface worked out. I didn't like the way that the, the design was and how I couldn't really change it as much as I wanted to. And that's when I found Flame. So this is my current Flame that I run, and as you can see, it's nice. It gives me the date, it gives me, it tells me good morning, it tells me the weather. I have all of my applications that I run, and I have bookmarks for different stuff that I use often. So we're going to set ours up to look something similar like this, just probably not as many Docker containers yet, but we're working on that. So let's get started with it. So since we are going to use Flame as a Docker container to install it, we're going to come into our local portainer. I'm going to come to App Templates, and I'm going to find, find Flame. And of course, we're using Nova Spirits App Template, and we're using Docker and Portainer. If you don't have Docker and Portainer installed, I'll have a card up in the corner of how to install it. Or you can look back in the playlist, and I'll have the videos there. I'm going to install Flame, and we're going to change Flame password. I'm going to use password, and that's going to make it so when I actually deploy it, the default password will be password. You can change it to whatever you want. Um, I'm just going to make it easier for myself. The other thing we want to double check is if you're starting to add more and more Docker containers, you want to make sure that your ports don't overlap. I don't think I've done anything on this playlist yet that uses 5005. You might have different containers in. Just double check, and if you already have 5005 in use, just change it to something else, like 5006 or 5007. It's no big deal. Just make sure they match up so Flame could use it. We're going to deploy the container. It's successful. I'm going to open it up, and here's our default page. Yours might look a little different, and if it does, that's fine, but we're going to go over to settings and configure it. So I just changed my password, so I'm going to put that in, and we could change the duration. I'm going to leave it default. I'm going to click don't save, but you can if you want. So here's our basic page when we first log in. And I'm pretty sure we're using the current version, but we'll check for an update. And we are using the current version. I'm covering it up, but there was a little notification that came. So there's a lot that we can do in here. So to start off, we can go to the theme, and we can change the themes around. So we can click different ones. Uh, that's not a really good one. It's a little bright. I like the darker ones, it's a little easier on the eyes, so it's not so bright. So you can see, I, I going by what I'm guessing is, these first colors are what the main page is going to be, and then the accents are the other colors, so if you pick something like that, it's going to have the white background, this will have darker backgrounds. So you can mess around with that, and see what you like. I like the Tron one, it's pretty simple, and it's easy on my eyes. You could also make custom themes, I haven't messed with that, but it probably isn't too bad. And always make sure to save your changes. So I come down here, and now my theme has changed. So we can go by general, and we have a bunch of different options. And this is just going to change around how the apps are sorted on the home page and stuff like that. I'm going to leave this default. Um, it also does have a search engine embedded in it, so if you want, you could search locally. Or it also has DuckDuckGo, so you can search through there. But you could also change it, so if you want to automatically change, search on Reddit, you could search on Reddit in the search page, or you can search on Wikipedia. But I'm going to leave this default, and we're going to move on. So for the actual interface, same thing. It's just if you want to change some of the options that are viewed. So we have the search bar, we could hide it, we could hide the headers. But I like all that stuff, so we're going to leave it default. Uh, I am going to add the weather, so it uses the weather API, so we're going to go into there, because we need an API key, and you also need your latitude longitude, so we're going to come in here, and it's free to use, so we're going to get the weather API for free, and 
and we're going to use an email. If I can type it. And I'll use a password. I'm not a human, and we're going to sign up. Oh, and I missed the agreement. So let's try this again. Hide it in there. So make sure you hit the agreement under the I'm not a robot. And we're going to sign up. So after you go through and you get your email verified, you'll get an email with a link to click on, and then we'll go from there. So we're going to get started and we're going to skip all of this because I just need my API key. So I'm going to go to API Explorer. Oh, I need to log in. Okay. Farmline Tech. Log in. Okay, and now we're logged in, so we can come in here, and this is what we need. We just need this API key. So I'm going to get that, and we're going to come back over to Flame, and I'm going to put that in there. Uh, if, if it copies. I'm having a hard time today. And then you can put your latitude and longitude in. Um, and then I'm not going to share that because I don't need everybody knowing my exact location, but... We're going to put in, I want my temperature in Fahrenheit, and you could also get additional settings, so if you want the cloud coverage or humidity, you could do that. So I'm going to finish this up real quick so it shows on my dashboard, so I'll be right back. So now that I added in my latitude, longitude, and my weather API key, this is what my homepage is looking like right now. So I have the weather, it is raining, so it showed me it's raining, and I have the temperature. It's telling me good morning and the time and date, but we don't have any apps or bookmarks, so let's add some of those. So if I come under applications, we can click add, and then I can come in here and it gives me this wizard to add in some new stuff. So if I come back over to my portainer, I want to make some shortcuts for this stuff. So I'm going to make a shortcut for pie hole. So I'm going to open up one of the web pages, and I'm going to get it from there. I'm going to copy the actual URL to the login page so I don't skip that. I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to call it pie hole, the URL. I don't usually give it descriptions, but if you want to, you can. And then you could also give app icons. So we're going to switch to custom icon upload. And I'm going to come over here to flame dashboard icons. And there's a GitHub that actually has all the icons we'll need. So after a second, after it loads, we come down here and it has a ton of different icons for self hosted containers and projects. So there we go. So now they're starting to load in. The only thing is you need to have an idea of what you're looking for and search through here for it because there's no actual search feature I've found. So this is listing like the different ones it works with and we're using a flame so it works really good. So this is really convenient because then you get to have nice icons to go with your your flame dashboard and just make it look a little bit nicer. So I'm looking for pie hole. And conveniently, here's the pie hole icon. So I'm just going to click on it. And I'm going to right click, save image. And it already knows it's pie hole. So I'm going to save that. I already have it. So I'm not going to download it again. But that's what the process you would do. You would come back over to Flame. You would browse. And come back to my downloads. And we're going to find pie hole. We're going to give it a second to load. And then we're going to add a new application. So now I'm going to close that out, and I'm going to go back, and when it loads, there we go. So now I have pie hole, I have the temperature, and it's telling me more on the time and date. So we have our first application in here, and you could keep adding applications to it. I'm just going to click on it, and you can keep adding. So like how you saw in mine, I have everything, all my Docker containers that I host, and then I have some bookmarks. So let's add some bookmarks as well. So I'm going to come back. And we're going to add some bookmarks. So you can actually split it up by categories and bookmarks. So I'm going to add a category. 
I'm going to YouTube and we're going to add the category and now we're going to come in so I actually clicked on the category and you can tell you it's editing bookmarks from the YouTube category and want to add a bookmark so we're going to make a, a bookmark for bar mindset and if I come over to YouTube and of course we're going to search up bar mindset the best YouTube channel out there And here we are. So I'm going to click on that. Let me get my URL. And I'm going to come back to Flame. Paste that. Nope, don't want that there. I want it here. So you can select the category so you make sure it gets categorized right. I want it under YouTube. And you can change the icon if you want. So I'm just going to leave it for now. But if you download the YouTube self hosted icon, you could do it that way. And we're going to add the new bookmark. So if I go back so here we go so now we have our dashboard pretty much done and of course you can keep adding stuff to it you can add more bookmark bookmarks and you'll have a great home page and it makes it so much easier for accessing all your self-hosted projects and here's my shortcut and it'll bring me right to YouTube the VM is a little slow today but we're good and here we are so I love flame dashboard I use it every day it's my go-to home page and it's the easiest self-hosted dashboard that I found to hold everything centrally and have links to all your different containers and self-hosted services you might have so again it, we hosted it out of docker of portainer which I think is the easiest way to do it and I hope everybody liked this one it's a quick oh, fuck so this was a, a nice quick tutorial on how to set up flame dashboard I hope everybody found this one useful I've used a couple other dashboards and I think Flame is the easiest and offers the nicest look of interface. It's uh, it's simple to work with, you just gotta add what you want, add the URL and it's all set up. It does all the hard work, it does all the organizing, so it's super simple. And with Docker and Portainer it's even easier to deploy. The only thing is that there's no really good backup for it yet. I hope it's something they add in the future because if you do need to move it over, you need to rebuild the dashboard. I've messed with trying to get the source code out of the Docker container files. It works a little bit, but you still need to add the stuff back into it. But I hope it's something to see in the future. But again, this was Flame Dashboard. It's a great tool to add into your home lab. And I hope everybody adds it in. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out some of my other videos and stick around for the next one. I'll see you later.